Have you ever wondered why Jesus came and he tore the he tore the veil? Like why would you need to tear the veil? Like the veil. That's just super light, super easy to to rip, but to see through, right? Think about a bride when they wear the veil on their wedding day. It's a monumental time for a bride, but I've never been a bride. And women, maybe you can help out here, but you can see right through that pretty much. Pretty much though, right? It's just a very thin barrier that, that guards you or not necessarily even guards you, but it's the last moment that you will have full clarity of now your new identity, right? But still, why would you need a savior who can create the world, who can come to conquer death? Why would you need to even have them come to break the veil, to tear the veil? Well, if you think about it, Satan actually is here to imitate God. He will look very much like the truth. I'm talking like 99, 99.9% the same as God a lot of times. And so we'll be deceived through our own lack of clarity of what is truth versus what is not truth. And that's where we, we fail is we can be saved, I believe. I believe we can be saved, but we can still have spiritual blindness, a, a rather almost uh, another veil that's going to be right there. That's going to hinder you from knowing the full truth because you can be saved and still fall. I, I, I'm a perfect example more times than I care to admit. And it doesn't even have to be sin even. It could just be aloof to the snare of Satan himself. And so when he comes to tear the veil, it's to give you that, the eyes of the spirit, the ears of the spirit as well, because you can actually hear what you're saying. Have you ever said that? Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Or I, I, I see what you're saying, excuse me. How can you see what somebody's saying? Right, um, if we look around in our world, there's actually God talk, God speaking in many different degrees. And I thought of that one the other day, and, and I'll, I'll give you more when time goes on, but we literally, I, I want you to start looking at different things Literally, the Lord even made the rainbow for, and it's different colors, and I've been able to just, recently I'm trying to hone this skill because it's not like, see, the Lord wants to give you gifts. He wants to give you good things, but He also wants to give you those things, saying, hey, use these now for advancing my kingdom, or to understand yourself better because I gave it to you. See, a lot of times we think the blessing is for us. No, the blessing is for us to bless more people because otherwise it's just, hey. Now the Lord wants you to feel His love when He gives you those things. So don't think I'm just like, okay, well, Lord, that's more of a burden. It will be, actually. It will be and can be more of a burden sometimes. But the burden is the blessing. It's the fact that you are etched into eternity and so he wants to use you and that you probably have said I want to be used by God I want to be able to display my faith my joy love and adherence to his decree his book the word the bible and so I just really hope that you will take this to heart to know that Satan is literally the 99.9% .9 close to God, but he's not God because you need to have a perfect God. That's 100%. He's always right. And a lot of people will say, well, how do you, where do you get free will and where do you, well, here's the thing is, if all roads lead back to God, okay, just consider it like you started here and it's going to end up right here. Okay, if they all lead back to God, then your deviations, although 
they aren't necessarily honored, and I'm speaking to myself here too, they actually can still be, as it says in the Bible, what the Satan intended for bad, evil, or confusion, the Lord can turn it for good. Because all roads will lead back for those who love and trust him. Now, does that mean that those outside the faith might not be ahead of you for, it might even be majority of your life. But that's not what we're here to, to relish in. We're here to relish in the fact that he loves us. The life that he gave you was specific to you and he needs you to open your eyes to the truth. There can always be a more absolute truth. Now, I tell people, don't speak in absolutes, but there are absolutes. Christ, right? The Lord, what the Lord, hey, how you doing? Uh, and, his, and his truth is absolute. And so when he says, I love you, absolutely, he loves you without a doubt. And that's why he says we can't doubt because we can get actually, we as humans can get to 99.9% .9 of the truth sometimes and think we're being truthful. And that's where the Lord says, test, test yourself and know, know yourself. Now, knowing yourself will be the hardest thing you'll ever do, but not knowing yourself will be the hardest thing that you'll ever do. Because what's it to you to walk around not really knowing yourself? And you might think you know yourself, but lying to yourself for what you already know is just ignorance because you know yourself and you know that you're being ignorant into what you have already come to understand. So know that difference right there. That's, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying is that's the difference is, and I'm, I'm saying this to myself. A lot of times I watch my own videos because I have to see my own reflection. I have to hear my own voice back to myself. Because even if I talk out loud right now in the present, I call it the loop. This will start changing the way you think if you start changing your loop. But also you gotta know that if you get to just, if after I make this video and I have to watch it, I'm well not have to, I get to. But sometimes it's, it's like, gosh, Jake, what, what are you preaching? What are you teaching? What are you saying? Who are you being? And so I hope you understand that I'm giving you that form of authenticity to know that I still fail, I still stumble, I still make poor decisions. And I think we all do. I think though, if we were to give actually God one of his biggest and most attrib attributable, att attributable, <laughs> wow. Um, one of his greatest attributes would be the fact that he's a judge. Now see, there's love in being a judge. And that's the end times, that's the last day he, because he gives us time to change, to repent, to be someone different so that he can or we can show our love, allegiance, loyalty, trust, and setting a foundation in him because we're gonna fail. And I have to know that knowing you or not knowing you that I cannot put my trust in people, even my closest person, even actually uh, potentially someone that I marry in the future because now, now can I trust them through, through God and hopefully that changes me so then I can reflect it better and then the people we hang around should become, we should all start to reflect each other. That's the sphere of influence. So just know that the only absolutes in life are not the 99.99%. It's the extra 0.01. That's the chasm. That's, that's, that's the narrow road that he's speaking about. That's the narrow road. It's a 0.01% difference. If there were, what would that be? That'd be a thousand roads. If there was a thousand roads, the Lord would be one of those a thousand and Satan could be potentially 99, 999 of those roads. And I don't say that to scare you. I say that to be privy to the differences between the, the subtle differences 
between good and bad, right and wrong, evil. No, no, between God and not God. Because we're not called to be our own morality judge, but especially anybody else's. We, we do live in a world that thrives, I guess you could say, it thrives off of subjective morality, which says, oh, well, I know that that's more bad than the thing that I did, or, oh, well, <laughs> I did that. It's not as bad as them next door. Or did you see what they did last week? No, that's moral subjectivity. The Lord does not care for that at all. He doesn't care about your moral subjectivity. Who are you to say you're good? Who are you to say you're bad? Who am I to say I'm good or bad? I'm, I'm probably one of the worst if I was to say the honest truth. Because one, that point zero one, that, that separation separates you from God for eternity. And so I want you to know that I love you. I should say God loves you. I love you. If you need help, if you want to talk to someone, get in, that, get in those comments down below. But just know that the thin line is there for a reason. That that person that walks that tightrope, that trapeze artist, or is that trapeze? Tightrope walker. They are very skilled in what they do. They have to train. They have to know balance. They have to know, whoa, 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 no, too much that way. No, whoa, whoa, balance. Get, bring it back. And the Lord commends you for giving your best, giving your all to make sure that you can be on your game all the time. And you're not. You're not going to. So give it to Him. Ask Him for His assistance. And Lord, open my eyes to see what you see, because I can't, and I need your help. Because Satan, the closer that you grow towards God, that 0.1%, Satan will try to come back and avenge what he thinks is his. But if you're saved by the blood of Christ, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died on the cross for you, rose three days again, there you go. The Lord is good, I didn't even know that I barely use Zoom, so I love you. Thanks for listening. Give me something down in the comments. Like, share, follow. Appreciate you guys. Quick take, Jake. I'm everywhere and nowhere all at once because I love you. We'll see you.